of Willis. The objectives to be looked at today are introduction, posterior circulation, anterior circulation, importance, and the clinical anatomy. Let's take a look at the introduction. The circle of Willis is an arterial ring located at the base of the brain around the optic chiasm or chiasma in fundibulum of the pituitary stalk and the hypothalamus. This arterial circle provides arterial supply to the brain and surrounding structures. This arterial circle is also referred to as the polygon of Willis. This polygonal anastomotic shape of the arterial circle offers the possibility of alternate routes for the blood flow, which are extremely essential for proper brain functioning because the brain is the most sensitive organ affected by hypoxia. Hypoxia of the brain tissue that lasts longer than five to six minutes results with the irreversible brain damage. The circle of Willis or circulus arteriosus is formed by two interconnecting arterial sources, the internal carotid arteries and the vertebrobasilar system, which is formed by two vertebral arteries and the basilar artery. This anastomosis is in an anterior-posterior order, with the anterior source from the internal carotid arteries and their branches, and the posterior source from the vertebral arteries, basilar arteries, and their tributaries. Now let's take a look at the posterior circulation. This part, or half, of the circle provides the posterior circulation and mainly supplies structures like cerebellum, brainstem, and posterior aspects of the cerebral hemispheres. The two vertebral arteries originating from the subclavian artery course upwards through the neck and ascend on the anterolateral aspect of the medulla to unite at the lower border of the pons, which is part of the brainstem, forming a single artery called the basilar artery, and by extension forming the vertebrobasilar system. The vertebral arteries also give off the following branches, which run somewhat downwards the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries, anterior spinal arteries, posterior spinal arteries. The basilar artery runs upwards in the midline, that is, ventral to the pons, from the level of the lower border of the pons, it gives off the pontine branches, also known as the pontine arteries, superior cerebellar arteries, and anterior inferior cerebellar arteries. The basilar artery finally terminates by bifurcating at the level of the upper border of the pons into its terminal branches, the right and left posterior cerebral arteries. Now coming to the anterior circulation. The anterior aspect of the circle provides the anterior circulation of the brain and mainly supplies the major portions of the cerebral hemispheres and deeper structures like the caudate putamen, also known as triatum, as well as nearby structures of the cerebrum, like the orbit. The internal carotid arteries originate from the common carotid arteries at the level of the fourth cervical vertebra. The internal carotid artery then runs upwards within the carotid sheath to enter the skull through the carotid canal formed by the temporal bone. Once 
the internal carotid artery enters the cranial cavity, it runs anteriorly through the cavernous sinus, where it gives off a branch known as the ophthalmic artery. The artery then turns and courses vertically upwards to the anterior perforated substance where it divides into the middle cerebral branch, that is, middle cerebral artery, and the anterior cerebral branch called the anterior cerebral artery. At the anterior perforated substance, it also gives off other branches to complete its half of the circle. It gives off the striate arteries. These are terminal branches or end arteries of the middle cerebral artery to supply the striatum. Other branches are the anterior choroidal artery, anterior communicating artery, which is a very short artery connecting the right and left anterior cerebral arteries and also gives off posterior communicating arteries. The posterior communicating arteries anastomose with posterior cerebral arteries, thereby connecting the internal carotid arteries to the vertebrobasilar system to complete the arterial circle of Willis. The importance of the circle of Willis is as follows. The circle of Willis allows equalization of blood flow between the left and right cerebral hemispheres and can allow anastomotic circulation if parts are occluded. That is, the circle serves as a backup system or a bypass allowing for an alternative route if there is an occlusion in the normal route of supply to an area. For example, if there is an obstruction of blood supply through the internal carotid artery and blood cannot reach the front of the left side of the brain through this artery, blood will be rooted to this area through the anterior communicating artery from the right internal carotid artery. Coming to the clinical anatomy. Thrombosis in the anterior cerebral artery, which is beyond the anterior communicating artery. It causes paralysis or weakness of muscles of the leg and foot of the contralateral side, that is, complete contralateral hemiplasia and hemianesthesia of the leg, arm, and face. This means the effects of the arterial occlusion is on the upper part of the motor area, which is the area corresponding to the area 4 of Broodman. The upper parts of the sensory area corresponding to area 1, 2, and 3 of Broodman is also affected, leading to loss or dulling of sensations from the leg and foot of the opposite side. The sense of stereognosis is impaired by involvement of the parietal lobe and also personality changes occur by involvement of the frontal lobe. Thrombosis in the middle cerebral artery. This condition causes hemiplasia and loss of sensations on the opposite half of the body affecting the face and arms the most. Also because the middle cerebral artery is the supply of the Broca's area, also called motor speech area of Broca, which corresponds to areas 44 and 45 of Brutman and to the Wernicke's area, aphasia, inability to speak, results. An important point to be noted here is the motor control of speech is confined to one hemisphere, that which controls the dominant upper limb. In other words, for a right-handed person, meaning right upper limb is dominant, motor control of speech is confined to the motor speech area of Broca, 
on the left cerebral hemisphere. The reverse is the case for a left-handed person. Cerebral edema may also result causing compression of the optic radiation leading to homonymous hemianopia on the opposite side. Hearing may also be affected, but this may be compensated by the opposite hemisphere. Thrombosis in the posterior cerebral artery. This condition leads mainly to visual effects causing contralateral hemianopia, also known as homonymous hemianopia, hemianesthesia, and cerebral edema. Areas 17, 18, and 19 of Broodman are affected, but the macular area is often spared. This is referred to as macular sparing. Complete occlusion of the anterior choroidal artery may lead to contralateral hemiplasia, hemianesthesia, and hemianopia. Thrombosis of the anterior spinal artery leads to medial medullary syndrome. Thrombosis in the posterior inferior cerebellar artery leads to lateral medullary syndrome.